morning. My name is Reverend Kwame Rubadiri. I'm a pastor with Christ is the Answer Ministries right here in Kenya. It's always a joy and a privilege to be able to take the message of the gospel, the message of the good news of the scriptures to as many, many people as possible. My main role at uh, Christ is the Answer Ministries, or CETAM, as we're popularly known, is to serve as the head of Christian education and discipleship, which simply means how we can grow in our knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and of our faith in Him. And that means getting to know what the Bible has to say to us. So I hope that this morning your hearts are open to hear what God has to say to us about His Word. Let me begin by asking you a question. Have you ever sat for an exam? Have you ever taken a test? Now, I'm sure all of you, even some of the youngest who may be watching, have taken a test or an exam before. We often see exams as a test or a measure of what we know, uh, what we're capable of, what we're qualified to do. It's either a pass or a fail, and depending on how we respond to that, it makes uh, up for how we will then proceed with our future steps. Now, all of us have been through tests of one kind or another, not just an exam. We've been tested in our faith. Uh, our, our hopes have been tested. Our dreams have been tested. Our hopes for the future have been tested. And in the same way, um, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ had to go through a test uh, which looked at various aspects, at least three different aspects of his life and how he would then be able to go out and become uh, the servant of God, indeed the sacrifice of God for all mankind. In the Gospel according to Luke, we come across um, a situation, it's a real life situation, it's not a story, of what happened in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right after his baptism by the, uh, John the Baptist in the River Jordan, uh, the Bible says that Jesus was led by the Spirit out into the wilderness to be tempted, to be tested. And that test is uh, what showed us not only what he was made of, not only what his characteristics were, um, but also to help us in, in our lessons in terms of what should be our character, what should be, uh, what should be our makeup as, as people of God, as those who want to represent God in the world today. Now, of course, a big test that's coming up, not just for our leaders, not just for those who are, uh, uh, are vying for uh, positions in uh, the political sphere, uh, but for the nation as a whole. When we make a decision, uh, some people have said, and it's been written before, that we get the leaders we deserve because the, uh, the leaders actually are a reflection of who we are. So when we make a choice or when we allow uh, leaders to go through the test of an election, we're basically saying this is the kind of person that we want to be in office. And it doesn't just have to be at the highest office in the land, at every set, area or opportunity of leadership. We make that choice based on who we are. So we need to take or allow ourselves to go through a test of sorts uh, in the same way that Jesus went through the test to find out exactly what we're made of. Uh, because when we're clear as to who we are and what we're made of, we can then make clear decisions about who we want to represent us in places of power or at the tables of power as well. Now, we all know Jesus was tested and tempted. Uh, the Gospel according to Luke records that uh, entire experience in chapter 4. And I'd just like to read a couple of verses and we look at the very first test that impacted or affected Jesus' life. And you may find yourself being pulled into uh, the description of this particular test or this particular uh, temptation that Jesus had to go through in your own life. And I hope that as you begin to hear the words begin to resonate with your own experience, with your own life, you'll begin to say to yourself, well, maybe there's an area that I need to uh, pass a test and to pass uh, this uh, area of temptation. In Luke chapter 4, and I hope you're tracking with me, uh, just beginning from verse 1, the Bible says that Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, and where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. Verse 3 and 4, the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell us or tell this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. Man shall not live on bread alone. 
And this is a text that comes from Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3. Uh, Jesus quoted from the book of Deuteronomy more than any other passages of Scripture during his ministry on the earth. This was a test or a temptation in the area of personal satisfaction. Personal satisfaction. And the only way to pass the test of personal satisfaction, or in other words, something that you want for your own benefit and for your own glory, the only way to pass that test is to make a sacrifice, is not to give in immediately to the desires that you may have in your heart at that particular point in time. Every single one of us on the face of this earth, it doesn't matter what our station is in life, it doesn't matter what our background, what our gender might be, will be tested in the area of personal satisfaction. Will you put your own needs and your own desires before the needs of others? And this was the first test that Jesus had to pass. Would he put his need to satisfy his hunger ahead of the fact that he was being called to become the savior of the world? He responds by quoting a passage of scripture, as I said, from the book of Je Deuteronomy, where he says that man shall not live on bread alone. In other words, you and I have to live. We have to have bread. We need to have some uh, physical needs met. We won't live just on bread, but on every word that comes from uh, the Lord. Now, in, in saying these words, Jesus is, of course, saying that, yes, you will have a time, you will be tested physically and materially, where your needs will become very, very much prominent. They will be the first thing that you have to consider. But that will be a test of how far you're willing to make a sacrifice for the needs that may be greater, the needs that might uh, affect your people. There's a wonderful book written by a man called uh, Simon Sinek, uh, and he's a well-known uh, guru in the whole area of uh, finding out what our purpose is, finding out what our worth is. And uh, this book is entitled that Leaders Eat Last. And in accordance with this particular book, he talks about how various platoons and contingents of the U.S. Army, uh, especially when they're on a, an assignment, a deadly assignment, and they're in a, a rough area, they may not have contact with uh, supplies and support uh, from uh, other members of the army. They're a small team, an elite team that's going out to uh, provide a particular uh, aspect of service, that uh, they have to ration the, the, the support that they have with them, the food that they have with them. And the leaders make sure that all the men are taken care of before they sit down to eat. That doesn't always happen in our society. And so when the area of personal satisfaction or the test of personal satisfaction comes, we need to be prepared to say, I'm going to make a sacrifice for the greater good uh, for those who may uh, be uh, around me. One of the issues around this particular test is that we often settle as individuals or even as companies, as groups, for the mediocre. We'll settle for just good enough, everything that is fine and not expecting that, you know, there's a possibility for greatness in us and there's a possibility for us to do far more uh, from all of the resources that we pull together. And uh, we just settle for, well, this is good enough. Let's not push any further. Let's not try to be as excellent as we can possibly be. Uh, let's not make any more sacrifices than we need to. I think the difference between being really good at something and being really great at it is the willingness to make a sacrifice, the willingness to go the extra mile, the willingness to do a little bit more. And you may be sitting there listening to me or watching me on a device and thinking to yourself, you know, I could actually do more in my area of work, in my area of experience. I could actually be excellent at, at what I'm doing if I just took a little bit more time. Maybe five more minutes of preparation, maybe 10 more minutes of study, maybe another hour of prayer, whatever it might be, I could do this a little bit better if I just made the sacrifice. But if I'm willing to get away with just good enough and not truly aiming to be absolutely great, then we are not passing this test of personal satisfaction. All of us have to make choices in the course of every day. And every choice that we make leads us either to greatness or just good enough. And, or sadly, in some cases, not even meeting the bar, not even passing uh, the standard that is set before us. It is under these conditions of testing, under this condition where Jesus had gone without food for 40 days, when a great test comes to his life to, say, to ask him the question, are you prepared to allow 
personal satisfaction to go ahead of the needs of others? Are you prepared to make a sacrifice? But Jesus was also tested in a second area. And this was found in verses 5 through 8 of Luke chapter 4. The, the Word of God says that the devil led him up a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the, of the world and said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered in verse 8, it is written, worship the Lord your God and him only and serve him only. This again is from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 13. Jesus was now being tested in the whole area of public admiration. Are you prepared, the devil offers and says to him, to get all of this glory, all of this splendor, if you will just worship me? How much are you prepared to give up in order to get public recognition, in order to have your name on, screen, on billboards, on, in the newspaper, on the lips of people? How much are you willing to give up to get that level of adoration, that level of worship, of personal worship, uh, for the sake of your own soul? Jesus says, worship God and serve him only. The area of public admiration is one of the biggest areas that you and I will be tested. Now, if you, like me and most people, will have a, a, an, an account on some social media platform, you'll spend a good deal of your time finding out if people like what you offered, or they said this was you know, worth forwarding or sharing with somebody else. We're so consumed with social media running our lives to the point where Whatever I'm doing at a particular time, whether it's eating a meal or it's being a part of a meeting somewhere, and, uh, and, and I share that in order to get as many claps, as many likes, as, as, as many shares as I possibly can, as if the measure of my life, the measure of my worth in that particular time will be the measure of the amount of public admiration, the public support that you and I get. Unfortunately, too many of us many young people as well, have been allowing our lives to be measured by public admiration, by the amount of people who visit our sites, visit our pages, who take time to comment, who take time to like, who take time to, uh, to, to, to react to what it is that we're pasting and putting up on social media. And we compare ourselves with others. Did so-and-so get as many likes? Did so-and-so get as, as much attention as I got? It is this area of public admiration that will suck the creativity and the ability for you to be truly who God made you to be. And if you are vying for a particular position in leadership and all you're interested in is that public admiration, that next number of uh, uh, polls moving in your direction, whether it's on social media or in, uh, in, in other aspects of our media, if, if that drives you, if that public admiration is so important to you, the question must be asked, are you truly ready to lead? Because you're more interested in what people think of you than what people need from you. Well, public admiration was an area that Jesus overcame simply by serving. You pass that test because you serve. You give to God and you give to other people. And that's the challenge for all those who vie for public office. The public office is not for the title, it's for the opportunity to serve, it's for the opportunity to minister to others. Jesus himself said that it was not a thing to be grasped, or it was said of Jesus, it's not a thing to be grasped to be called the Son of God or to be equal to God in some way, but to become a servant, to lay down your desires for public admiration is what God wants us to look for. The last area of testing, the third area, we find in verses 9 to 12. The devil led uh, Jesus to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from there. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. Now, this is a text from uh, Psalm 91. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered in verse 12, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. This is the test of identity. Who are you? 
because everyone is waiting for you, the real you, to show up. And Jesus said, I'm not here to impress anyone. I'm not here to show off um, my great abilities or who I'm connected to. I'm here to fulfill a mission and a purpose that has been entrusted to me, that I'm the only one on the face of the earth in the history of mankind who can fulfill that purpose. That's why I'm uniquely made. The late Dr. Miles Monroe once said that too many of us are born originals, but too many of us die as copies, end quote, because we're trying to be like someone else. We're trying to be what they represent. We're trying to be the kind of people that they are in order to attract the kind of company that they have attracted instead of being truly who God has created us to be. The only way to pass this test is to submit to God is to give your life in submission and say, Lord, take control. Everything is in your hands. I trust you to use me in the way you've gifted me and helped me to be the kind of person that will bring glory and honor to you. I want to fulfill the mission that you have given to me. I want to be the best version of myself in this world because I use every gift that you have given me, not only to serve others, but also to make sacrifices for others and to truly be myself. May God bless you. I certainly hope that you will allow these thoughts and these words and this, uh, the way in which Jesus passed all of these tests to be part of your experience so that as you grow and as you move forward in this life and especially looking at the kind of leaders we're going to be electing and the kind of people we want to be in the nation that God has blessed us to be a part of, May God help you to pass your test. Amen.